Hello everyone, hope you're having an awesome day wherever and whenever you're watching this. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video here at Most Amazing Top 10. When it comes to the unknown, I think the human species responds in two ways. We're either scared by it or we want to know everything about it. Tombs have been the subject of exploration for decades and so many still remain sealed. What lies in them? Is it treasure? A curse? Armageddon? The book of life? The secret to immortality? Or is it just a centuries old? corpse. Well sometimes we just don't get to find out and sometimes, just sometimes, it's better that way. So having said that, this is the top 10 mysterious locked tombs that should never be opened. Starting us off at number 10 is the Padmana Baswami Temple. Good luck spelling that if you ever get it at a spelling bee, I hope you don't. But anyway, this temple is located in Kerala, India and is one of 108 other temples that are devoted to the worship of Vishnu. The temple is under the care of the Travancore royal family but in 2011, a man filed a case saying they mismanaged the assets of the temple. So the Supreme Court sent seven people to explore it and document its belongings, but it turned into a lot more than that. They found six massive secret vaults or chambers with doors made of iron and no visible hatch or opening. The chambers were named Chamber A to F and they've been able to open Chamber C to F many times. Chamber A took some time but they did get it open as well, but Chamber B has stumped everyone. No one has any idea what the chamber contains but people believe it's holy in nature. But here's the thing, the temple has three doors. The first has metal grills on it but they managed to open that one. Behind that door was another wooden door which they also managed to open, however the last door made of iron had no ways of unlocking it whatsoever. Locals think if any human attempt with technology is made to try and open the door against its will, it will unleash calamity into the city. There are even legends about the initial exploration committee where one member tried to open the door but fell ill, whilst another one lost his mum while trying to open it as well. Either way, can't we just leave something untouched? Maybe we don't need to know what's behind the last door. Chamber B can just forever just be secret Chamber B. Coming in at number 9 is the Kingdom of Lioness. Now legend has it Lioness, which was located in the British Isles of Scilly, one day became fully engulfed by the ocean. In that one day, it wasn't an overtime erosion ting, it was all in one day. People even believe that the 140 islands in its place now are just hilltops of the lost kingdom. Lioness was most famous for being part of Arthurian legend as the home of Tristan the resident hero. The one day drowning was even said to have occurred during the 6th century, which was the time of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. So I I mean it is backed up historically and sort of geologically by the islands as well, loosely, very loosely. However, it's said that on that fated day, the rich of the kingdom put all their valuable belongings in tombs, hoping the tombs would float or at least survive the drowning as well as, I mean, themselves. That way they wouldn't be left with nothing when their home was fully submerged. The people didn't survive and the small tombs were also scattered everywhere. None have been found yet, but I think that's fine. The number of lost people attached to each of those tombs almost gives them all really bad karma or luck. Even if someone did find it, spending a dead man's treasure can just never go down well. Others went as far as to say they put their babies in the tombs as well, hoping they would float to the top and survive. So I mean, you could either find a chest with treasure or a skeleton baby. It's a 50-50. Of course, the existence of a line has never been confirmed, so it's hard to back up with evidence, but I mean, I believe it. At number 8, we have the Great Aztecs. The Great Temple of Tenochtitlan was dedicated to the Aztec God of War and the Aztec God of Rain and Agriculture. The temple was built sometime after 1325, but it was rebuilt six times. The reconstruction model they made of what it looked like back in the day is absolutely stunning, but now there are just ruins left. I hate when that happens, and it happens quite a bit. Items that have been excavated can already be seen at museums, but in 2015 another big discovery was made. Archaeologists found a tunnel passage underneath the temple that led to two sealed chambers and they believe inside are the remains of some of the earliest Aztec leaders or gods. They always thought the Aztecs cremated their leaders since they spent decades excavating and found nothing, until now. So either these chambers are historical gold or they could be the resting place of Aztec gods who may then wreak havoc on us for disturbing their slumber. 
whichever one you want to believe. Filling our number 7 slot is El Dorado and I'm sure we've all heard of the legend of the golden city of El Dorado. Gaining a lot of attention in the 16th century, explorers and treasure hunters have been looking for El Dorado for as long as they knew it was a thing. I feel like I've been hearing about it since I was born. But El Dorado was actually the name of a mythical tribal chief of the Musca native people in Colombia. They say he covered himself in gold dust and submerged himself in a lake. Since then the legend has gone from being about him to being about a city of gold, then a kingdom of gold and then an empire of gold. Despite centuries of searching, no one has been able to find El Dorado. I mean a whole kingdom of gold? Of course they weren't going to make that easy to find. Many speculate El Dorado the chief wasn't that mythical at all. They believe his tomb is the key to El Dorado. People have spent so long searching for the kingdom itself, they forgot where it all began. The man himself. A lot of conspiracy theorists believe if El Dorado's tomb is found and opened, the kingdom will follow suit. But open Opening his tomb could also be like opening Pandora's box and lead to complete destruction. It just can't be as easy as simply finding and opening a tomb and becoming unimaginably rich. Can it? If it can, that's a one way ticket to Colombia for me. Now at number 6 is the Royal Cemetery. The cemetery in question is located outside Nanchang City, China and it's 2000 years old and it's bloody massive. It takes up 40,000 square meters and has 8 tombs as well as a chariot burial area with walls 900 meters long. But it also has a locked tomb in the main mausoleum that grabbed everybody's attention. Archaeologists hope that it will help identify whose burial site it is and at this point their only guess is that it was Liu He who was the most influential ruler during the Western Han Dynasty. The era itself is a bit blurry but the loose story is that Liu assumed the throne was then ousted, then he returned and then he was forced out again. Major drama. The team found hundreds of terracotta figures, 10 tons of bronze coins, more than 10,000 things made of either gold, bamboo, jade or iron and they even found a road network and a drainage system. It sounds like these people were building a mini city not just a burial site. Which you know what, do you. Either way from the amount of valuables they already found there, is there really a need to open the locked tomb? If the guy went to this much effort to make his deathbed like this, I think we should just let him lie in it. Just let him, let him be. Why must we ruin things? We don't need to. Coming in at number 5 is the lost city of Kalahari. So back in 1885, Canadian entertainer the great Farini was one of the first to explore the unexplored Kalahari desert in southern Africa. When he came back he had photos with him which depicted ruins that were the remains of a lost civilization or so he thought. He saw a broken line of stone that looked like it could have been a wall at some point and he followed the remains and found heaps of flat stones that clearly had cement in between them. That's evidence of a city if I ever knew that. That was sarcasm by the way. After that many have tried to find the lost city, even Elon Musk's grandparents tried to find the city 12 times. In 2016 aerial scans confirmed the man made ruins the great Farini had described so whatever it was, it was real. But extreme conspiracy theorists believe all the flat half buried stones are the top part of a gigantic tomb belonging to one of the great leaders of one of the tribes living in the lost city. The theorists believe the leader and his tribe ensured his tomb would never be opened but performing rituals for it and on it and if for any unfortunate reason someone does try and open it, well I let your imagination wander. At number 4 is the intact tomb which is very rare considering most of these tombs are thousands and thousands of years old so finding one intact is a dream if anything. And with Egyptian tombs it's even harder, even King Tutankhamun's tomb has been spoiled. But anyway in 2018 Egyptian archaeologists found a 4400 year old tomb of a high priest called Watye hopefully I pronounced that right, didn't think I did, who lived during the 5th dynasty. Within the tomb there are 5 shaft tombs and 2 false doors. One of the shafts had been open and unsealed but the other 4 have stayed sealed. The 5th dynasty was the era in which the oldest copies of pyramid texts were carved into the pyramids. The tomb is around 10 meters long and is carved out of rock which doing with hand tools is bloody hard. I've never done it but it sounds bloody hard. The paintings and artwork they found are all really good quality despite having some water and time damage. However, they refuse to open the other tombs for an undisclosed reason, so perhaps that's all we need to know. Filling our number 3 slot is Joseph Bonamy. Joseph was an English sculptor, artist, but more importantly, Egyptologist. He went on the Hay Expedition where he sketched antiquities, and people speculated he had learned the secret to time travel on his time there. But what stands out about Joseph was his mysterious connection with socialite Hannah Courtois, who may have funded his expeditions. Hannah inherited a fortune, and when she died, 
inside her mausoleum was this massive Egyptian style crypt that Joseph had previously designed for her before he died. For 1854 it was distinct. Ironically enough Joseph is buried nearby and it's said that before he died he passed all his knowledge on to Hannah. Reuters were actually the ones who published a report about this in 1998 claiming her mausoleum contains a working time machine. A key for the tomb has been missing for quite some time which just adds more fuel to the fire. If it is a time machine, I would like to travel in time to ask Joseph what is actually happening. Now at number 2 is the lost city of Zed. Has anyone seen the movie of this? Because I have and I loved it but then it ended so abruptly and I was like oh my god is that the end? Are you kidding? That can't be it. I just, I just wasn't emotionally ready but anyway. I'm blabbing on. <laughs> British surveyor Colonel Percy Harrison Fawcett believed this indigenous city existed in the jungle of Mato Grosso, Brazil, and he decided to call it the Lost City of Zed. He based his belief on his own exploration of the Amazon River, as well as histories of South America that he had read. He never did find the Lost City in the end, and him and his son actually died trying. Many people believe that the indigenous people living in that area know exactly where the city is and how to get to it, but they've made it their life mission to stop outsiders from getting in or finding the entrance. Many believe they're guarding one of their ancestors tombs which lies inside of the lost city. Others on the other hand believe it may even be Colonel Percy's tomb. Either way if that many people are trying to stop you from finding something, odds are there's a good reason for it. And finally at number 1 is Atlantis. Not the luxury hotel resort and water park, the underwater lost city. Plato first mentioned Atlantis in 360 BC and it was meant to be an insanely powerful kingdom with technology more advanced than and an unmatchable navy. Fast forward around 9600 BC, a terrible disaster hits and the island sank into the sea never to be seen again. Many teams have tried to find Atlantis over the years, notably a man called Simcha Jacobovici, hopefully I said that right, who dove into the Mariana Trench. And all he found was six Bronze Age stone anchors near Spain which seem to have come from a civilization existing 4000 years ago, which is still way off when Atlantis existed. But many people believe because their technology was so advanced, they found a way to disappear to us but still exist by themselves. Perhaps they cracked the code to living completely underwater as humans, and that's what they've been doing since 9600 BC. Who knows? Plato never clarified how advanced advance actually was. Many people believe an underwater tomb belonging to one of Atlantis's early leaders is the entrance to the hidden kingdom. But do we really want to find it? What if they advanced even more being hidden away all this time? What if they've developed weaponry to face anyone? who accidentally finds this tomb and exposes them. What if they're strong enough to take us down? I don't have any more what ifs. Should we really be seeking our demise? I think not. And I think you should agree with me. Thank you. And that's it for today's video guys. I hope you now know why there's really no point opening these locked tombs but there's also no point in me even saying it because half of them haven't even been found yet. Let me know what you guys saw in the comments below and as always I'm your host Eamon Hassan and I'll see you next time. Bye!